And this structure is called an algebraic twin building. This was an old story of Brownell and Dips and others. So this was the state of the art. Now the problem is this twin building, of course, is a purely algebraic object. So it exists only for this minimal polynomial thing, but not for our completions. So what we would need is some blow up. And this blow up is a twin city because it consists of many twin buildings. <laughs> and this works. And this twin city will do. Uh, excuse me. we are getting virtually the city. OK, so it's a twin city. And this tw twin city will do everything what we want, mainly. Points in the Twin City will correspond to uh, chambers in the Twin City. Sorry, will correspond to points in the isoparametric submanifold. Uh, the completed Katsumudi groups will act uh, transitively on the Twin City. Torai in the completed Katsumudi group will be in bijection with the Twin City. So everything which we have here will carry over. So I should explain you a little bit how a Twin City looks like and why a Twin City looks how it looks, namely why it consists of many buildings. Are there any trees in the city? What? Do you have any trees <laughs> in the twin city? I mean, as you have in any twin building trees, I mean, it's a green <laughs> city and you have really <laughs> many trees. Elements. But, well, I mean, the Twin Cities appeared only in my thesis and then in some papers, partly on my computer, partly on the archive, mm -hmm. partly submitted. So, I mean, there is surely much to do about greening the cities and other questions <laughs> about that. So, uh, yeah, I can't say much about trees in the cities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I mean, the central point is uh, building somehow belong to the board body composition. And if we have now here a loop group, then I mean you just write down the same thing, B, W, B, and then you find that it's not defined on the whole loop group because the Borel subgroup just consists of Laurent series, uh, some a n z to the m, and n is l to equals and zero. The while group is somehow a polynomial group if you do it, so all those things have a finite principle part. So this means the poor decomposition is only defined on loops with a finite principle part, and that's not all, well, at least in the completed setting. But you have more, I mean, you have the opposite one, B minus W. B minus, this is defined on all loops which has a finite positive part and go down infinitely long. And so this group I usually call LG plus, this group I call LG minus, and then I have LG, and I'm happy because the poor twin decomposition, B minus W, B plus is defined on the whole, and that saves me. Because if one studies a building in more detail, then uh, one finds another uh, definition for a building. This means we take the set of chambers, that's so just the quotient of G over a Borel group, and then we define a distance function, d xy is a w of xy, and w of xy is a class of x y to the minus 1 in the Brua decomposition. So if we have x minus 1 is in some class b, w, b, then this is element, this is w. So you see, this uh, mm, twin decomposition exists on the whole group. This will give the co-distance between those two buildings. So this will be defined on the whole simplicial complex, but those exist only on subcomplexes. And so they are so we define the distance either via this way if it exists, and otherwise it's, it's infinite. And then we see that the building separates in several, several pieces, namely the building here above consists of thousands uh, of affine buildings and down here we have thousands of affine buildings and we have that each pair of a building is twinned 
and it's a classical twin building. Okay, and those twin buildings correspond rejectively to quasi algebraic subgroups of the loop group, so to subgroups which are isomorphic just to the, uh, abstractly isomorphic to the group of algebraic loops. So that's the structure of a twin city. Now you could ask what happens if you define the twin city for the formal completion in one direction. I mean, then uh, the group ends at a finite point down. This means that the positive building will be just one. In the infinite dimensional building will be very big. And in fact, it will be one isomorphism class of the universal twin building of Rollin and Titz. But that I didn't write up, so it's just on my hmm. laptop and papers. If I can get the other classes too, I'm not exactly sure, but I would think it could be possible with some representations here, but I don't know. Okay, so we have the Twin Cities, which are here and which do exactly what they should do. And then you know that buildings, uh, usual spherical buildings, have representations of flat complexes. This is quite nice because you can calculate very fast explicit things. So you ask if this exists too, and it exists. You can construct them as operator algebras in Hilbert spaces. You get some sequences of planes in the generalization of the subtle class manual of integral systems and can work out all those things in detail. You can work out involutions. For example, you can prove by writing down in one line that fun involutions exist for Katsumudi algebras, but only, of course, for those if you have the explicit representation. Okay, and the twin city, of course, embeds also in the polar action, LG equivalently, so in the tangential space of symmetric spaces. So all we need is Katsumudi symmetric spaces, That's also in my thesis. And they exist, they are tame for shape manifolds. And they have absolutely the same structure theory, uh, which we have also in, for finite dimensional symmetric spaces. Namely, if we have a complex Katsumudi group, MGC, I write it now as M because here we really need holomorphic loops. Then we have the following classification. We have MG. Ah, so just the compact real forms. Their compact is defined, well, they are not compact, of course, because they're infinite dimensional, but they behave like compacts, and there's a unique compact real form. Then there are quotients, mg r over some k, which is against a fixed point group of some involution. So this is one, uh, class two, this is class one. Involutions, I mean, there are old papers classifying them in the algebraic setting. Uh, by Liebenstein, Katz, Rousseau, and so on. And that's a quite recent paper by Einstein showing that this uh, can be con uh, done the same for completions. Then you have dual ones, MGC over MGR, and you have MGD over K, so just some non compact real forms. And happily, you have also a duality. When you classify finite symmetric spaces using orthogonal symmetric Lie algebras, Oslas, then you can associate to those things Osakas, orthogonal symmetric affine Katsumuri algebras. It works out all exactly the same. So if you want to ask, what about curvature conditions? And here's a point. Those spaces are Lorentzian. And for Lorentz manifolds, there is a theorem of nowhere. I mean, it's quoted as Kulkan, but Kulkani told, him, told me that he didn't prove it or can't remember to have proven it. Is that radical Kani? What? Radical Kani? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I'm quite sure he proved it, even if you can't remember. At least, well, no, he said this to me after a talk, he was pleased that I quoted his here, but he said, well, uh, yeah. I wrote something that exists once to a friend, but I can't remember to ever prove it. That sounds like a car, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the theorem says if k is bounded, k less than a, then k is constant. And there are many more instances, so if it's bounded in both directions on definite or indefinite planes and so on. So this means we can't have such a cover the sectional coverage is less than zero. But we can have such a numerator, r, x, y, x, y, is non-negative. Because the problem arises if you go to 
uh, I mean, so sexual curvature is defined as this, divided by x, y squared, and in on a degenerate plane, this goes to zero, and then the curvature somehow may explode. So we can have this, and this we have a d. Um, I mean, that's, that's what we want from the geometric point of view, because what we want is the geodesics either go together or spread. And for the behavior of geodesics, we just need the Jacobi identity, the Jacobi equations, and for the Jacobi equations, we have only this. So this condition really means that the space behaves like a compact type space and geodesics come together. And I mean, so you know what I write now, namely R x y, x y is less or equal than zero for the non-compact spaces. So it's really exactly the same. And those spaces are diffeomorphic, diffeomorphic to a vector space. One can prove that in this setting abstractly via some kind of, I don't know, Cartan, Hardman Cartan theorem or so. But I, I think one has to do it really explicitly. So just writing down those quotients and checking what happens. And then one can prove quite fast that this is diffeomorphic to a vector space. So you see we get really the whole finite dimension, picture in finite dimensions. And you find that the representations of Cartesian symmetric spaces and use polar actions. And here I will make a little dotted error. There is work by Weindl, Borotsky, Heinze, and others which, well, I met Heinze and Borotsky two months ago. They said, well, it's morally true, meaning they have, but they have to check all details for some Cases, I think the A and case is settled completely. The other cases have to be checked in detail and brought out in detail. But so I would say it's morally true, and I mean philosophically it's true, of course. So we have really somehow the finite dimensional picture. So we have finished the Katsumuli geometry, and if you think about that, you see that this gives you two times about the same picture. You have always big continuous groups, which have a structure which is governed by finite groups. And this picture of big and small is always represent, rep represented in other geometric instances. So I mean, the question is, of course, what happens if you start with another discrete group? I mean, the next technical example would be a hyperbolic uh, wide group for a hyperbolic Katsumuli algebra. So we are working about, but we have some conjectures, some ideas, some philosophy, some lemmas, so parts can be proven. I mean, this would be very interesting because, for example, E10 appears in string theory, supergravity, and also quotient spaces which look formally like the objects you have here. So I mean, this would be a topic one could think about. What is if one starts as a group? And a small geometry, how can one blow it up? So here we have two instances, but I think there are many more out there in the mathematical world. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so let's thank Walter again for his interesting talk. So we, there, there will not be any seminar next week, but the week after, Marco Zeman is going to speak. I'll send the announcement. And we're going to go upstairs for lunch. Everyone's welcome to join us.